everybody, welcome back. In this video, we will not be talking about Dark Dimension 3. We will be talking about the Black Order. Specifically, we'll be talking about their turn order. Uh, I did a video a few days ago about whether there's already a counter out there. Um, are they going to be trash? Obviously, that was kind of, you know, tongue-in-cheek. I don't think they're going to be trash, but I was frustrated a little bit with about the potential of, you know, what I considered a non-meta counter to this team. So now what we're going to do is look at the Black Order Turn Order. Black Order Turn Order. Black Order Turn Order? B-O-T-O? The Bodo? I don't know. I should have thought about that before shooting. And Anyway, we're going to talk about the Bodo, Black Order Turn Order, and you'll be able to see who's going when and what abilities you could likely use and how it kind of all plays together. I like to shoot these videos uh, for certain teams. I don't do this all the time. I think I've only done it for Inhumans and maybe one other team. But when you've got kind of a new meta-ish or new potential meta team coming to the table, I really want to cover that type of thing and share. And I'll put I'll put this uh, spreadsheet on um, my shared YouTube or Google Doc uh, so that you can check it out and go through it and see every little in and out of it. Uh, and if I've missed something or I've got the speed wrong, please share. Uh, sometimes some of these things get messed up with speed order uh, or speed ups, uh, and I could definitely lose track. You know, fill speed bars, all that type of thing. It gets kind of tough but i think it should give you the gist so anyway let's go check it out bring me wolverthor all right so for those of you who've never seen one of these spreadsheets that i've done and i've only done two so it's likely anybody who's watching this video has never seen the spreadsheet so let me explain what i've got here from a further distance like kind of a macro view um, i'm just showing on the left hand side what team it is it's black order you'll see these giant black boxes normally what i try to do within each one of these boxes is the first box is turn one the second box is turn two the third box so on and so forth you get the idea um, I've got the character column here. I've got the speed column. I've got what turn we're talking about column. I've got the ability that I think you're likely going to use there, a description of that ability. And then over in these two columns, I've got the energy that you should have on that specific turn for the special and the ultimate. So that way you can see as the energy increases or what energy you've got at certain points so you can understand what abilities you have the opportunity to use. Um, and then way off to the right here, I actually decided to throw in the passives just so that it would be a little bit easier to kind of see these things. Uh, see, you're like, well, wait a minute, does this matter? Well, what's the passive? And it'd be right there. And on this particular one, I actually even threw in the T4s and what those upgrades were so you can kind of see those as well. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit here so you guys can see this a little bit better. All right, so we got it at 150 zoom. So what I've got here is the turn one for Black Order is Thanos Empowered Basic. Um, what you'll see off to the right here is that his special is ultimate. Neither of these are ready. When he becomes empowered, which happens immediately um, on his turn, and why does he go first? Because Ebony Maw, who is right here, uh, right here, we'll highlight this column. Ebony Maw's passive is on spawn. Da, 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 da. Uh, where is it here? Um, fill an ally Thanos speed bar by 25% per Black Order ally. So that should uh, fill it up by over 100%, uh, even though it's not Black Order and Thanos allies, which, but four times 25, so he should, Thanos should be going before everybody. So that ability in uh, Ebony Maw's kit gets the chance for Thanos here to be able to go turn one. And because he doesn't have the energy um, in his special all, you're forced to basic. So what his basic is, while he's empowered, is you attack the primary target and adjacent targets for some damage, 240%, plus apply bleed. 80% chance to gain counter. Okay, cool. That's it. T4s, uh, you could get some more damage and a guaranteed counter, but... Uh, Proxima Midnight would then be next because she's getting speed up on spawn, again, from her passive. On spawn, gain speed up. So her, her effective speed, that's what ES stands for here, is 186. So she's going next, and what she's going to do depending what you're looking at the energy here, she comes fully charged with her special and almost fully charged with her alt. And there's no energy generation on this team, so this is what you're gonna be stuck with, is either the special or the basic. I suppose there's a chance that you might wanna do the basic, but uh, I don't know. You always wanna try to get some offense downs out there, depending who you're facing. And uh, her special, Proximal Midnight Special, is attack primary target, 
for 200% damage, apply offense down, chain to three targets within two spaces of previous target for additional damage, apply offense down, dodge breaks the chain. T4 gives you some more damage and the offense down for two turns, which could be pretty nice, but there is some overlap in that. We'll talk about that a little bit, okay? Uh, next up, Thanos again. So because Thanos also gets a speed up, from uh, Proxima Midnight, du, 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 du. Here, here we go, let's find, scroll over. So on on Th Thanos, on, Th on Ally Thanos' turn, giving stone, give stones and speed up for two turns. If you remember, uh, Fox Next only had this for one turn at first, which made zero sense. So they fixed it to make two turns so Thanos could go right after her. That's why they did that, is so that he could go right after her. So he's gaining speed up as soon as he goes for one and two turns. So then, so he's effectively got 145.5 effective speed, um, which is gonna get him to go for his second turn right after her, or somewhere between 186 and 145.5. At this point, Thanos now has full energy for his special and he's two away from his ultimate. So his special, and this is where Black Order comes together, okay? Black Order right now comes together with this special. You flip, all negative effects to positive effects for all allies, all allies. Flip three positive effects to negative effects for enemy for all enemies. Apply taunt to an ally call obsidian. That's the key for this. You need that taunt on call obsidian right away. This is where you get it, okay? So you the sooner this thing goes, the better off you'll be that you're, the, the person you're facing is gonna be stuck fighting call obsidian. This attack is unavoidable and cannot be blocked. The T4 in this is you flip all um, positive effects up from three to negative effects for all enemies. I love that. Anytime you get three to an all, spoiler, it's gonna be an essential for when Yeti and I do our T4 video. Um, and on top of that, you apply taunt to an ally called Obsidian for an additional turn for two turns. So this right here is where the Black Order comes together, is this turn when he gets to use a special and put the put the taunt on a called Obsidian. Then, then that's when Ebony Maw goes for these guys. But again, you've got that 145.5 and 122 speed mark that you're gonna be fighting with somebody who can get in between there. That's where people are gonna to try to counter this team is between those two points. And that's where you saw that Korath, Ultimus potential counter out there. All right, so Ebony Maw is now getting ready to go depending who goes before him. And what's happening with him is he has his special fully charged, but his ultimate is one energy away from being fully charged. So you're either gonna use his basic or his special. To me, I'm using his special. Applied defense, well, and actually, before we get to this, let's look at his passive for a second, okay? Just so everybody understands what his passive is. On spawn, two regens, two death proofs, and immunity for two turns, plus the uh, Thanos speed bar um, for Black War Allies. So he's getting regens, death proofs, immunities, okay? So he's keeping people from doing stuff to him in theory. Problem is, for this counter is you can't the, the immunity doesn't block a taunt it's not considered a debuff though it kind of should be if it was from the other enemy but anyway it's probably a cody nightmare on uh Th ally thanos turn you give him the stones plus two regens two death proofs and immunities um on death of an enemy hero controller you're getting charged and um you're applying immunity to all allies and barrier to all is for 20 percent of this character's math he max health this is all about phoenix I'm not going to get in depth in it other than to say when Jean Grey dies, uh, you're giving immunity to everybody so you don't get defense down and you're getting barrier to avoid the damage taken from when she pops up. And then you're talking about the charge and where you're going to um, actually ability block her again. So you get some resistance. So there's not a whole lot. I shouldn't say there's not a whole lot. There's a ton there. But it's about, you know, really giving himself some stuff and giving uh, Thanos some stuff to kind of help uh, last a little bit longer. So his special, back to his special, you're applying defense up to self and all allies. You're applying counter to self, all Black Order and Thanos allies. Applying offense down for two turns on enemies. Now, I, and you're also clearing counter from all enemies. So one of the things I wanna focus on here is his offense down for two turns. So you've already got Proxima Midnight who went just a little bit before this, putting offense down on, on tunes, okay? And now you've got Ebony Maw coming up shortly after her for putting that offense down for an additional two turns. So originally when I was looking at her special and her T4s, I wanted her special T4s because I wanted that additional turn of offense down. 
Now I don't know so much. You know, it's kind of like, man, I don't know, because you've got Ebony Maul going shortly after that, and he's, he's going to apply offense down for an additional two turns. So unless there's a gap or somebody who can cleanse those offense downs, Phoenix, um, that's the only reason to do this, okay? But even if, and when I say do this, it's the Proxima Midnight Special T4. Um, but if, again, if she's doing it for just one turn, you really don't need the two turns because it's all getting sucked up into Phoenix or somebody else who's clearing this thing. So uh, you might see the Proxima Midnight Special T4 upgrade kind of lose its, uh, unless that the damage increase is great, I'm probably not going to call that essential personally. So his special is doing all kinds of offense down, defense up, getting your team ready to basically protect itself. That's what it's about. Next up uh, is Corvus Glaive. This is his first turn. Uh, Corvus is coming in with his ultimate ready, but not his special. Uh, he's got 101 speed. What his ultimate does is pr attack primary target for 280% piercing damage. During stealth, this ability deals double damage against a primary target if they have defense up. Um, attack all adjacent targets for 200% piercing. I would love if there was a way that you could actually apply defense up to a tune with this. That'd be so cool uh, because, I mean, depending what happens, you might not have a lot of the defense up. I see Corvus likely being stealth because Thanos is basic and then his special. Um, actually, he's not... Yeah, he's not actually attacking anyone special, he's just flipping effects. So between his his basic and Proxima special, you're likely to get someone down to 50%. So Corvus is going to be stealthed more than likely. So it would be really cool if you could hit somebody who has defense up. We'll see. But what that also does is think about Shuri, is that go ahead, bring Shuri against me and my Black Order. Go ahead and put your defense up. Because you know what I'm gonna do? Is I'm gonna pick somebody and I'm gonna actually hit them with a number of tunes, and then when I get the Corvus Glaive, he's likely gonna take him off the map because you've got defense up uh, and he's gonna hit him for double. Uh, the T4, it's got some additional piercing on it, um, but that's pretty much it. His passive, um, on spawn, you gain offense up for himself only for two turns. You give uh, uh, you give Thanos the offense up for two turns. So remember, when, um, and actually now that I think about it, his offense up for two turns doesn't make any sense if his special's not actually attacking anybody. But anyway, you get that basic to have an uh, offense up on it. Uh, when an enemy, the, st the stealth mode and get some crit um, when you're in stealth. Uh, and then you can give your Black Order allies some additional damage, which is really, really nice. So he's going to be hitting somebody and probably taking them off the board, especially if they've got defense up at this point. So by the time you get to Corvus, you're probably losing someone. And then... You've got the tank of the group, Call Obsidian. He is so slow, and actually this speed isn't even right. It's 88. I don't know why, how, somehow I got 100 there, but he's actually 88. Um, he is slow. He is slow, 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 so slow. Um, so you're gonna use his, well, what it comes in at is he's one turn away from using his alt, and his first turn you can use his special. You absolutely 100% wanna use his special first turn. Clear two positive effects from self, that's fine. If Ebony Maw is an ally, which he will be, you clear all negative effects from self, and you gain taunt for two turns. That's what you want. You want that, and you gain defense up for two turns, again, and another death proof. And you want those death proofs to stack on call. Check out his um, the video I did on him. I won't go in depth on that. Um, and then you get a little heal. So that's how the first turn goes for these guys. Technically, Thanos is getting a second turn in, but it, it's... It's Thanos getting attack in, Proxima putting some offense down, Thanos getting some buff flips, which is really nice, and getting the taunt on Call Obsidian so that anything after that is forced to hit him. Uh, then you got the Ebony Maul putting some more defenses up for everybody. You're just kind of building to like, you can't mess with us, you can't mess with us. And then Corvus Glaive comes in and be like, I'm gonna start hitting you. And if you got defense up, you're gonna die. And then Call Obsidian clears anything he's got on him and then is taunting for two more turns. So you're like, Oh my God. And that's why you wanted uh, a lot of red stars on Call Obsidian because he is going to be someone you're going to have to really just push to get through. And you want that taunt for two turns. It's already there. You only have T4. The T4 is just for some health. Okay, cool. So then you get into turn two. Turn two and some for three, okay? Turn two, you get Proxima's ultimate because it's finally charged. You'll see that her special's got a way to bring up. And that's really what you're gonna find with this team, by the way, and I'll get to that in a second. 
Uh, so you use her ultimate, which is uh, you get a speed reduction and you apply a stun and slow, which is great. So anyone who you're really worried about on the board and you need to slow up and kind of reduce speed and take out of the equation for a bit, use this, okay? Um, you get a little bit more reduction in speed at that point if you use the T4s. Ebony Maw uh, is comes up, I believe, and this is where I start getting a little bit unsure of the speed order, but I think this is right. Ebony Maw comes up with a second turn where he's gonna use his ultimate, okay? And this is where he really kind of can change the board um, with stealing health and speed. So his ultimate, and you'll see here, is it seven out of seven where his special is now one of five. You steal 3% health from all enemies and redistribute to all allies. That uh, bypasses heal block. Repeat this four additional times. Apply slow to all enemies for two turns. Each attack redistributes a maximum of 25% of this character's max health. Won't get into the math of that, you get the idea. T4 is on this, and this, because of the fact that this isn't just adding stats, it's actually stat adding abilities, you're gonna wanna do these T4s. Fill speed bar for self and all allies by 5% per Black Order and Thanos allies. So it's by 25% essentially. Reduce speed bar for all enemies by 25% essentially as well. So you're reducing their speed bar, you're slowing them for two turns, you're increasing your speed bar. So you've just protected yourself a whole bunch on turn one. And now you're slowing with a stun and slow from Proxima and you're stealing some health and speed bar from the enemy so that you can now go at them, okay? So you're setting yourself up pretty good. Okay, so now Ebony Maw has done this. You've got your chance. In theory, I think a lot of these guys are gonna go before other tunes in the game because of all the slows and speed bar reductions. You've now got Thanos' basic again, okay? And at this point, because Thanos has already used his basic and his special, this is where he's at. He's at one out of five on special and six out of seven on ultimate. So he's not using his ultimate quite yet. And then you've got Corvus Glaive. He's now got his special ready and his ultimate is on a major cooldown. Corvus Glaive for his turn two, his special is attack the most injured enemy for 300%, uh, 360% piercing, ignoring taunt and stealth. So for Corvus here, what he's gonna essentially do is if you've in theory already taken someone off the board with Corvus turn one, right? If somebody's hiding behind a taunt or they've been stealth and they were low, you know, from an operative or something along those lines, then it's like, no, you're not hiding from me. I'm gonna come get you and I'm gonna at least hit you for some a lot of piercing. So in theory, Corvus, he's kind of like the assassin of this group where he's like, no, I'm gonna pick off your people. Nope, that person's dead. Nope, that person's dead. So I, I could see him kind of playing that role here. Then after that, you've got Proxima Midnight's turn three, because again, remember you got some of this speed overlap and she's gonna be using her basic. Attack primary target for some 230% damage, plus clear two positive effects, and without T4s, a 50% chance to gain an assist from a Corvus Glaive. This attack cannot be blocked. If Glaive is an ally, this attack cannot be dodged. The T4 guarantees the assist. I could see this because you're gonna see a lot of, what's happening with Proxima at this point, you can see she's two out of four and one out of five, so she's basically gonna be on a basic parade, basically on a basic parade. Um, for a few turns here. So I can really see, well, you're gonna want her basic as kind of a borderline essential um, if you wanna guarantee some wins with this girl um, because you're guaranteeing that Corvus assist on a number of uh, turns and they're pretty early in the match. Uh, and then Call Obsidian, he at this point has already used a special, so his ultimate's ready. He's now got one out of five on his special, five out of five on his ultimate. You attack the prime, and by the way, this ultimate is gonna hit hard. Attack primary target for 440% damage plus 10% additional damage per death proof on self. So, and you're transferring the positive effects. The T4s add an additional 110% damage and an additional 15% additional damage per death proof. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna call this essential because I think it's gonna wipe another person off the board. So you've got Corvus Glaive wiping people off the board, potentially two turns. You've got Proxima dinging somebody a little bit to bring him down. If anybody's got a lot of full health and I can hit them, I'm using Call Obsidian's ultimate on them so that he can bring them from whatever close to green health they have to yellow down to red. Um, I think this thing is gonna be wiping people out. It's gonna be pretty nice because he should in theory be stacking up some death proofs, especially if the other team is forced to go on him and it's increasing this damage. It, it could get sick. So now we're on to turn three slash four, and this is getting close to the end of it, because then you start going to this basic parade, which you can kind of see at the bottom of the screen there. Ebony Maw is up for his third turn. 
Uh, he's got to use his basic this turn. He's got some super long cooldowns. You really start getting into tough range here. It's like, oh man, like if shortly after this third turn, if you haven't wiped these guys off the board, or you might be in trouble as a Black Order member. So, because you're going to be basicing, but we'll see. So, Ebony Maul's basic. Attack primary target for some piercing, additional attacks. If it's a hero controller, you're doing some bleeds. Some T4, some additional attacks and piercing. No big deal. You're just hitting people. Thanos finally gets to ultimate. Finally gets to ultimate. Hits his turn four. But for everybody else, it's kind of their turn three. So at this point, he is two out of five on a special and seven out of seven on his ultimate. So he's going to attack all targets for 150% piercing plus 50% drain. Repeat this attack one to two additional times. Reduce speed bar again by 20%. This attack cannot miss. So, you already had Ebony Maul go, reduce some speed. Now, once Thanos gets to this, if those guys are slowed and can't use their turn and he gets this turn, guess what? You're not going. You're not taking a turn, forget about it. You're getting wiped out, okay? So Thanos is doing that with some additional speed bar reduction. If you go into the T4, you get more piercing and more importantly, 100% drain. So this dude's now healing himself more if you had the chance to hit him. Repeat this attack a guaranteed two times. After that, you get Corvus Glaive for his third turn. He's now basicing. Uh, attack primary target for 160% piercing. Clear two positive effects again. 50% chance to get an assist from Proxima. Can't be blocked or dodged if she's ally. Um, at this point, he's one out of five and two out of five. So he starts going on a basic parade at this point. Do you want to put the T4s to guarantee the 100% assist from Proxima? At this point in the match, I would wait. I'm probably going to call this a really good one. Uh, it depends how we see this black order go. If you don't really need the assist here, I'm probably not going to recommend this T4 because we're already kind of late in turn three. And if a lot of tunes are already close to death, nah, you don't really guaranteed need that. So, and then right after that, what do you know? You got another Proxima basic. And if you already T4 that, you're getting an assist from Corvus Glaive anyway. So you hit, so if you use Corvus Glaive, he hits, maybe he doesn't call the assist right after that. Just use Proxima to hit the same person to either kill him or potentially kills him with a Corvus assist. And then you get uh, Call Obsidian's uh, third turn where he's gonna basic, it's just damage. He's gonna get damage. You know, and you can see Proxima's at three out of four, two out of five, and then Call's two out of five, one out of five. And you really get at this point, I'm gonna scroll way to the top here, where you're at, you're just at this basic party. You're at, you know, turn four, turn five, turn six. You're really just basic in, uh, where you can see you've gotta build up all these abilities you can get the special off for Proxima for her turn five. Ebony Maw on his turn six and Corvus Glaive on his turn six. You get specials, some ultimates. Call Obsidian can special and taunt again on his turn six. But are we really caring about turn six at that point? You know, turn seven's where you start getting some of the other abilities. So you can kind of see like what, if you even need, I'm not even sure you need to get to turn four with this team. It's brutal. So, I mean, turn one through three slash four, We'll see if people are surviving. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Right now, there's one potential counter that could screw this all up, and that's if you can get that Ebony Maul down. But if you don't, oh my, oh my. It's going to be pretty brutal. So uh, let's uh, let's do an outro and wrap this thing up. So what do you guys think? Uh, is this team going to be one to reckon with? I definitely think they're one to reckon with. Um, even the counter I put the video out on, you know, it's it, there, you got to have a lot of things go right. We'll see if that really ends up shaking out. Um, and, uh, I don't know what, uh, you know, what type of investment it's going to take for this team. What time is it gonna, investment is going to take for that team? We'll see. Uh, this team, I'm personally glad I've at least got them to about T12. I think they're going to wreak some havoc in arena. Uh, I wish I have more stars on them. I've only got four reds on many. Um, I've been, I'm not going to have seven yellows on them. So we'll see if they can compete with the seven yellows you know, five, six, and seven red stars that are in arena already. If they can't, that kind of stinks, but we'll see. Uh, I would definitely, I, at this point, I'm, I'm recommending this team, but I'm recommending it with a little bit of caution to not fully go in. My And again, I speak for what I do. I brought them to T12. I have not t 4 would anything other than what I have already done for Thanos, and I have not purchased any tokens uh, for red stars on these guys. So, and I know Glaive and Proxima are already in the store, which actually worries me a little bit. Why did Fox Knox do that so quickly? Are they worried that they're not going to be good enough and that they need us to see that they're good enough? I don't know, but I'll take it. 
So anyway, tell me what you guys think. Uh, appreciate you stopping by. As always, hammer down the like button, click the notification bell, subscriptions, share with your alliance mates, grandma, grandpa, gra cousins, aunts, uncles, whoever you feel like it, or don't share with anybody. Totally up to you. Uh, but I appreciate you stopping by. Until next time, hope you have a wonderful day.